Hello everyone, this is Prince Raj welcoming you all in the 16th episode of the Core Talk. This is our 16th episode and here we have two special guests from South Africa. Our guest is Madam Mapasheka from Ganteng province and Mr. Daba sir from KJN province of the South Africa. They both are so active and too much popular in the in their respective province. They are successful coach in their province and their team is doing so good in the tournaments. So welcome our guest. Namaste. Mapa Seka, madam, can you give your brief introduction about yourself? Okay, um, my name is Mapa Seka Mahowi. I'm, I'm Coco coach from Gaude. I've been a player for I've attended more than five national games and then I had an injury and then I switched to being a coach. I started off coaching school sports and then we just moved to the community games and start developing them. Thank you, madam, for your brief introduction. Now, Dava sir, can you give your brief introduction about yourself? Uh, okay, hello everybody, namaste. Uh, my name is Oli Lendaba. I'm from KZN province in South Africa. I coach uh, Team KZN Coco Males. Uh, we're one of the best teams in the country. Uh, it's quite a huge honor to be part of the program. Uh, we hope it's going to be fun. Yes, thank you, sir, for your introduction. So now we will jump in the main interview section. So we will ask you a question. We will come to know what is the Coco in South Africa. So we will start from Mapaseka, madam. So, madam, can you please tell how did you came to know about the Coco in South Africa? Um, I started off playing netball. So we are trained netball. There were people doing some indigenous games, and that's yes. where my coach introduced me to the indigenous games. And then she's like, "No, these are the we have different codes." And then I fell more in love with the Coco. And then she's like, okay. She gave me a background on it. And then she's, she just then started introducing me to the game. That's where I started learning it. And then I just started participating and being a part of it. Yes, ma'am. That's good. And Daba, sir, can you please say, how did you come to know about the Coco sports in South Africa? Uh, oh, this is a very good one. Uh, and so we, we have KwaZulu uh, Natal Indigenous Games Council. So they were having workshops and the games were actually introduced to us uh, by some guys, by, uh, by the guy of the name of Mr. Raj Pansi. Mr. Raj was the president of Coco in South Africa. So he introduced the game to us because he's from our province. So we started learning the game and we started developing a lot of interest in the game. See, it, it involved a whole lot of running, a whole lot of diving. So we were enjoying the game. So we started taking the game seriously, but the guy who actually introduced the game was Mr. Raj Pansi through his programs uh, with the Wazulu Natal Indigenous Games. Uh, Miss Nomu Samapisa then recruited me to play the sport. And then it started there from year 2006 uh, till now. So the sport has grown uh, a whole lot in South Africa. That's great that uh, you love the game of run and chase, having lots of thrill and having the skydiving, pole diving and catching, tagging the skills. You love the, this technique and now you are a successful coach from your province. So moving forward, I will ask a question from Mapaseka, yeah. madam. What is the special thing that you loved in the Coco and you keep playing this game? The thing more that draw me specifically to Coco, it's just about how complex the game is. Yeah. It is, it's not very complicated, but it just has so many rules and it's a fun game to watch. Yeah. It's not a it's not a known game, it's not so much popular. But once you start playing, you enjoy just how how much the game is so complex. It has so many rules, it's just a broad, it it's it's just a very eye-catching game. The first yeah. time I saw it, I was very intrigued. I was like, what kind of game is this? And then when I started learning that, no, it's just a catching game thing. And then once you start about how uh, players just go all out, it's diving, it's they just do everything in their powers to catch the opponent. And that's what actually drew me to the game. It's just 
about how different and complex it is. Right, right. So this was really amazing that you also loved the game, which having the chase and run and a lot of rules, which made this game too much interesting. So moving forward, I will ask question from Daba sir. How many nationals you have played as a player, sir? So as a player, I played uh, five national tournaments. As a player, I played five. Uh, and as a coach, I now have I now have played seven. I have seven as a coach, five as a player. That's a really great achievement that you have played five nationals and seven nationals you have given coaching to your team. And can you please tell Papa Seka, Madam, how many nationals you have yeah. played as a player and as a coach, how many nationals you have given service to your team? Well, as a player, I attended four four national tournaments yes. and then two national tournaments as a school sports coach and then yes. as a community sports it's three four of them that's really great achievement that you both are really doing good job in in a coco game and really achieving a lot and i'm wishing you all that to keep going like this and achieve many more so Moving forward, I would like to ask a question from uh, Mapa Seka, madam. What was your journey in the Coco as a player till now? As a player, well, I started off in 2014. And then as a player, when I started wow. going to my first nationals, I was very, a very bit scared because this was the first time seeing all the other um, province, provinces compete and I was very nervous about it but then once you're in the game and started you know proving yourself that's when I started you know wanting more out of the game and then the journey has has been quite sweet sailing for me because you get to learn each and every you get to learn each and every tournament there's something new up you, that you might learn from an, another province just about how the tactics are and then just about how you know, they work as a team. You learn from other teams. And that's where I actually grew as a player. Not to just go as a straightforward player. No, there's a, there's a other provinces that you can learn a lot from. And then it's where you grasp this kind of technique, that kind of running style. And that's where you just grow as a player. Yeah, yeah, correct. And what was your journey, Dabasar, in the Coco as a player and as a coach, sir? Uh, let me start about my journey as a player because they started it started as a player. Uh, my journey as a player, you know, has been very a rocky one because at the time when we were playing, when I was playing, the best province in in South Africa was the Northwest. So at the time when I was playing, uh, so we 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 had to come up with a new strategy because they were dominating the Coco at the time. So as a player, we struggled. We got our medals, our silver medals. We got our 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 bronze medals. But gold has always eluded us as a winner when when I was playing. So as a player, I always had uh, had that that drive because I wanted to win that gold those gold medals. So I had to switch in thing in 2010. It was my last nationals in 2010, and then from took a break for two years. And then in 2013, I came back as a coach. And then that's where it all started. Now, my coaching journey started in 2013. I was coaching the uh, team Eteguini uh, at the Provincial Indigenous Games. Then I coached uh, at the Salga Games. Uh, I, I think I, I think that was a rocky journey for me because that year, that my first year of coaching, I didn't get a gold medal. So, so it was quite interesting at the time. And then I had to develop myself as a coach. Then I went through some coaching clinics. I studied a lot. I did a lot of fitness. I did a lot of mental fitness for myself to get myself ready for the journey. I had to do that. I had to do that to get my house in order. And then in 2014, uh, I had to go back to coaching again. So when I coach now, I remember now, I once faced defeat and I got a bronze medal as my first time coaching and I got a silver medal in another tournament. So when I came back, I came back very strong. Uh, I started coaching, Team KZN, 
And then from there, you know, I've coached uh, seven national tournaments and we've won gold six times. So yeah. it's only one time where we, where we got a silver. I think it was year 20, I think it was last year where we got a silver. But we've got from year 2013, from 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. It's quite yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but as a coach, I have six uh, national gold medals working together with my technical team. I have a very good team behind me. I've got a very good assistant coach, uh, Mr. Norton Zibande. I've got Zwele Tushabalala, who's a coach for the females. I've got a very good team. My manager is very good, supportive department of sports, arts and culture. They, they all the way, they always support us financially in terms of kids, in terms of moving around the country, in terms of selecting the team. That is why I think that maybe we, we're ready to face other countries. I saw the Asian Games. I was very much interested when I saw the Asian Games. I wanted to be part of it here yeah, just to watch the game so that I learned a lot. Uh, so that we can come back and maybe make South Africa as prosperous as India, as well as the other countries that I saw the Asian Games. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really interesting and you are so passionate about the sport. You have good experience as a player and a lot of experience as a coach. As you shared your experience, it's really great, sir. Salute to you. So Thank you very much. So, so moving forward, my question is, what kind of tournament Coco Federation of South South Africa is conducting for the players? Okay, um, we've got the school sports games, which are for the kids who are still in school. Yes. Those ones are still your primary schools, just your development. That's where the game develops. That's where the players get developed. It's the school community games, and then they host their tournaments. They used to be in the winter games. So apparently this year it's going to be the summer games, which I think will be in December. Quite not sure about that. And then we've got um our community games. Those ones are mostly your high school kids. You're out of the the ones that already finished schools. That's where 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 the community meets, and then that's where the games are. And then we've got your selections, which are the that where we compete against other regions. And then that's where we can actually select Team Houting. Yes, so Federation is conducting lots of tournaments for the players to keep engaging them and to keep them in the playing. So moving forward, yes. I would I would like to ask a question from Gaba, sir. So what kind of interest is shown by, is showing by the youth players, sir? I'm saying the development is very good in our communities especially here in KZN, because we have uh, tournaments that we organize as a federation. Uh, and then we also have tournaments that we organize together with the with, 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 with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture in, uh, in the province. So it's a very supportive department, Mr. Mtembo uh, and his team, they're doing a stealing job there. And just to tell you something, you know, KZN have won the Indigenous Games for 12 yes. consecutive years. 12 consecutive years. So that's why Indigenous Games are a serious business in our province. Uh, and COCO is a serious business because it forms part of the Indigenous Games. So, so the programs are there. We've got our Salga Games, under 20s participates there. We've got, got our school sports, under 14 uh, participates there. And then we also have other tournaments for our under 16s that we organize. And we also have a, a Premier League that is going to be starting in Guazulu Natal. Ne? So we have the Guazulu Natal Games, Premier League, and Coco is part of the sport. Then it's going to be part of the Premier League. The league is going to be launched sometime soon, and uh, it's going to be on TV. I'll send you some clips so that you people can watch sure, our Coco. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and see and see how far we've developed the sport in, in our province and in South Africa, because South Africa is great on Coco now. Yeah, as you shared your experience and view that how the players they are showing their interest. So every player needs a public retention. So once a sport having a good public retention, good audience uh, response, then only a sports is growing. So regarding this, I would like to ask question from Apaseka, Madam. What is the public response for this game, sir? 
Okay. Um, in my community specifically, there is there has been a huge response because once we once we start training, you can see just about how many people come through. That's when you see that this just has a positive impact on the community. It takes off the kids from the streets, give them something positive to do with their extra time. And we've got a lot of support from the community because once we start competing somewhere, you're going to see some parents coming, wanting to support, wanting to learn more about the specific uh, code that we play. So I think from my community, we've got uh, three local primary schools and they're all participating in school sports. We've got high schools, they're all participating. It's just that it's a great initiative for the schools and for the community as a whole. And then I, I, I think it's doing a great initiative by just taking kids from the street and giving them a lot to do with their free time, not just exposing them to the, to the game, also learning how to play the game and knowing each and every take take as much as we're trying to to also just navigate around make it not making it all just about indigenous games just trying to navigate a league within our regions just to promote the games not just in Manzaville but around Houting as a whole just to get more people to participate yes yes it's really great that this primary school secondary schools middle schools they all are taking initiative to host that tournament and they are showing their interest. So it's really good that our game is really doing well in South Africa as well. So moving front, I would like to ask a question from Dava, sir. How did you balance this cocoa in your sporting culture and your academic culture? Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know, uh, uh, before I became a, a coach, you know, I used to t I used to be a teacher, so I used to be in school. I used to teach accounting in school, so it made it easy for me. It made it easy for me most of the time because I used to be uh, I was used to interacting with a lot of students. So by interacting with a lot of students, I was able to bring different people from different areas, and then I brought them together to create this cocoa fraternity uh, in, in in the province. Uh, it's been a huge task. It's been a very huge task. I think I've put in a whole lot of work because I'm not only as a, as a coach, but also as a secretary of the Wazulu Natal Coco Association. So it has been a whole lot of work. The, 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 the feedback from the community has been has been very good. Uh, if you look at our Coco group in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in our Facebook, you will see the numbers there. There's a lot of people. People started understanding the the, 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 the sport in our township. You know where I live. Everybody knows the sports uh, in the district where I'm in. Uh, everybody knows the sport. So it means it's a very big thing. Uh, that is why we think that maybe it's high time that uh, our national federation start organizing maybe yes. tournaments as well as uh, a, a Coco League, a professional Coco League, uh, where we can get sponsors. Uh, once we get sponsors, uh, recognized, and then we can actually maybe start trading players with other countries, such as Asian countries, and, and explore a, a whole lot of more with the games. And maybe at some time, we have our own Coco World Cup. Eh? You never yeah. know, eh? You just never it's, know. It's you very know. soon. It's very soon. Mapaseka, madam, can you please say, how did you balance a sport with other aspects of your career? Um, with regards to just ac academics, for me it was a bit of a challenge because when I started, when I started playing, it was just uh I think my my school didn't really know what Coco is. So when they start seeing letters that I'm going to participate. They started just having that interest specifically on, okay, what kind of sport this is? And that's where they, as a school, also got interested in wanting to do more and like, no, we want to be part of these kind of games. Yeah. And it was a bit hard to balance the two because I'm trying to finish school. I'm trying to navigate being a player. I'm trying to navigate, trying to coach. But then I think the most challenging thing that brought greatness out of me is just the development. When you yeah. start developing small kids, you're under 14 it's they're still kids so trying to learn, uh, teach them rules all these different rules that coco has has just been a, such an inspiration because that's where we get like the, the talent that's where we start grooming kids so when when i started with them 
it was just a bit of a challenge to navigate all of it. But then once I start getting into it and start getting the rhythm of, you know, being a player, trying to teach the new development, I think I'm still quite navigating around. And we're doing such such a great job, not just as a community, but as housing as a whole, because we, we, we got to see results position-wise. That's when we started realizing, no, we are growing as a, as a province. There's so much growth. And then once we start seeing the results, that's when we're noticing that, no, it's not just about the development. We start growing there, but then there are positive results that are showing in everything that we do. Yes, yes. Once the effort is made, then only we will get success. So it's really good that all the people are keeping their efforts and they are really doing well. So my next question will be from Daba, sir. How do you motivate a player when they are not doing too much good in a tournament? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, you, with, with the variety of players that we have, we have different kind of players. You know, you have players that can actually work well under pressure and they are players that can actually not work well under pressure. Uh, so psychologically, I do have some tricks that I do. Have a lot of tricks that I do. Those bleeding techniques I do have to keep my players calm. I do have those motivational talks with my players. I do quite a lot of them. You know, I also have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with my players. I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings. You know, when you see us smiling, it's because uh, we know when we, we when we go through struggles. I go through struggles with my players. Uh, and then when we celebrate, then we all celebrate together. But yeah, the bond that I have, I think, with my athletes, uh, it's tremendous. Uh, I think it should it, it should never it should never be taken for granted. Uh, the respect that they have for me, I think it, it, it is it, it is so much. And with my players, with earning the respect of my players in my province, it has also allowed me to 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 earn the respect of other players from other provinces as well as other coaches because uh, I work very hard for 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 for, for Coco in South Africa I think uh, I, I always sleep and come back and come up with other techniques the following day and I would want to see my players implementing those techniques I, I, I don't just come up with techniques just to 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 come to to come up with them and just not not use them so with every technique that maybe you will see, other other provinces that are using now, we, we we actually came up with them and we try to make sure that we up the standard of cocoa in South Africa so that um, one day we take this this sport a bit further. You know, we are we are champions in rugby. Uh, we've yes. tried cricket, it doesn't work out for us. Uh, yeah. We want to try cocoa as well. Eh? We can try cocoa as well and see where, where, where it takes us as a country because We've got uh, coaches, Mapasega is one of our female coaches doing well. You've got Nomnoto Shezi, she's one of the female coaches doing very well. Uh, Nondrobego doing well there. So you've got a lot of female coaches that are coming up and it will be yeah. such a huge inspiration for them, you know, to be part of, of, of the World Cup or, 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 or of the World Championships, uh, yeah. if I may say. We, we, I, I think... That's where the the, the, the the Coco Association of South Africa wants to head. Uh, we want to see, we want to try ourselves against the best in the world and see where it takes us. And we believe maybe we can come up with, maybe a medal. Let me not say gold, but let me say we can try out and see if we can come back with a medal for South Africa and see where it takes us. Yeah, yeah. It's really good that when a player is not doing well, you are packing them, you are motivating them, you have a special few techniques, you have some special strategy to pack a player and it really helps a lot to a player. So moving forward, I would like to ask a question from Apaseka, madam. How important is mental preparation compared to the physical training? Okay, um, I think also it also just the mental preparation also begins with just the bond that you have with your team. Once you have a solid bond with the team and knowing different characteristics, as people, we don't have the same strengths. So once you know that a certain player can excel in such a different uh, situation from the other, that's when you can draw your attention from and just try to motivate them. Mental preparation, everything begins with your mental state. Once you're in it mentally, your body can prove it. 
So once you're in it, once you're in it mentally, you can go a very long way. So I always, there's one thing that I always do with the team. When we start, before we start even playing with, the, start competing, I let them know, you know what, man? Just prove yourself. There's more that you can do once you're in it. Once you can tell yourself that I can do more, you will be able to do more. Because that's when your brain says, no, I can do it. So once you're mentally stable and prepared, you can reach the stars. Thank you, madam, for elaborating about the mental training that how mental training is important for a player. So moving forward, I would like to ask question from Daba, sir. What are the key qualities you observe in a player during a selection of a team for the tournament? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay. Uh, you know, when you select a team, Coco is a team sport. Yeah? yeah. I think that's very important. Whenever, 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 whenever you, you look at your sport, you need to understand your sport. Now it's a team sport. So the first thing that I look for, number one, I always look for teamwork. You know, when your athletes are able to work in a, in, in a group or work in a team, I think that's very important. That's the first thing that, that, that is important. Number two, you look at your respect. Respect. You need to have athletes that respect each other, that respect each other's talents. Because somebody will be, always, there's always going to be somebody who's going to be good and good or better than you, okay, in the team. But whenever it is good, it should always be beneficial to the team. And then you also look at your running techniques. You know, normally in South Africa, we don't run as individuals, we run as packs. I call them, I call them so we run as packs, we run, we run in threes. So you got to understand your partner. Now, when you understand your partners, the two partners that you are running with, it means we can actually get a whole lot of time in getting the defending team to work very, very hard. You know, just to get out one player, it will you will unite all the night players will have to unite just to catch one player because we with whatever we do, we do it in a context of a team. And then the most important thing, whenever you want to create a team, you need to create a team that is balanced, not only on the physical aspects, but also people who believe in themselves. So you yes. also have to put a spirit there where players can actually believe that they are champions. You know, my players, you know, I work them very hard uh, psychologically so that they believe that they are champions before they even get on the field. Whatever happens on the field, whether in the particular day it's a win, whether it, uh, we don't make it on that particular day, we clap our hands, we go back to the drawing board, we learn from our mistakes, and then when you come back, uh, we, you, we actually show you that we actually learn from our mistakes. I think uh, the psychological part of the team is very important. You know, you can have a team that is physically fit, but if they do not believe that they can actually pull it off, if they don't believe that they can actually be champions, uh, it becomes a whole lot hard. So the psychological part, before I even go to any training, I get my players psychologically positive. Because once an athlete starts believing in themselves, once they start believing that they can actually pull it off psychologically, the physical part just moves, it, it moves smoothly. Uh, it becomes a very smooth process. But whereas where you have a third player, but they don't believe in themselves, and then it's like you, you, you're working backwards. So my athletes are very positive, not overconfident. Ne? You, need yes, to be, you need to draw the line and overconfidence. <laughs> so the, the confidence is there with, with the preparation, but it, it, it doesn't have to be over because overconfidence will kill you. It, it, it will get you into trouble as a coach. Uh, and I always uh, encourage the other coaches that are coming up that you need to have a team that is well grouped together, but not overconfident because once yeah. they become overconfident, Lose respect for their opponent, and once you lose your respect for your opponent, I tell you, the worst is going to come for you. So you need to respect your opponent because you do not know how well they prepared. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's it. So it's really good that we have to be in confident. Confidence wins over confidence kills. So you are you are observing lots of points in a player: speed, confidence, techniques. So it's really good that you are observing many skills in a player and you are making a good team. So moving forward, yeah. I would like to ask a question from Apaseka, madam. What is the role of Indian community who is staying in South Africa in making this game more popular? Um, I think the that's where the game began, most specifically. So 
I think the Indian community, uh, just from the previous games that we're playing, we watch them as a team. So there's more things that you can learn from the Indian community and the Indian Coco. Because I think when they started seeing that we are, as a country, we are also participating in the game, I think that's also where the strength came from. So we get also the support in knowing that the Federation is also behind us, wanting to grow also, not just as a province, but also as a country as a whole. So the Indian community is, keeps on keeps on teaching and teaching us new techniques and just giving us more things, just to want to do more as much yeah. as the uh is just so popular in India. That's where we want to be in South Africa. Right, right. So it's really good that our people who are staying in South Africa, they are engaging in Koko and they are really serving somewhat whatever they can do, they are doing from their side. So I would like to thank our Indian community, whatever they are doing there to make the Koko game popular in South Africa as well. So moving forward, I would like to question from Daba sir. What is the culture in South Africa for a developing game? The culture of cocoa. Uh, you know, South African cocoa is is way different to 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 maybe the way that you play uh, in, in India. Uh, because mm. yeah, I'll tell you about our fans before we, I go I, I go into the game. You know, we have a lot of fans in cocoa in South Africa. Each and every province, they will have their own songs. They will have their own dances. They will have their own collaborations. So it makes the whole game fun because uh, just one catch and the amount of noise that is there at the stadium, I'm telling you, it will overwhelm you. You will actually think that you are actually losing the game when it's only one catch that has been made. I think the culture that is there, uh, it's always has been good. The respect that is there in the Coco community in South Africa is good. And the momentum is there. That is why we need to make sure that maybe we don't break that momentum. Uh, we have uh, more tournaments that is going to be played maybe across provinces, tournaments that are going to be played across countries, you know. Uh, Coco is big in the Olympics, that's what I think. Uh, my that, that that that's my sentiment that Coco should be in the Olympics. It, 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 it doesn't belong uh, where it is now, but but we're working we're working towards the yeah. and I see the work that the India uh, Federation that is putting in. Uh, uh, Mr. Bridge also visited South Africa. I think he visited us in 2019. Right, yeah, he visited us. Yeah, yeah, he visited us with Mr. Rohit. Uh, they were here in South Africa and they showed an interest. And you also have other countries, you know, uh, Namibia is playing Coco now, eh? uh, yeah. Tanzania mm. is playing Coco now, Kenya, Kenya is playing Coco now. Ghana, so, Bali, a lot of our South African continent, they are yeah. showing their interest in Coco yeah. and they are really playing very well. And they're playing very well. So, so I think we need to grow the sport maybe within Africa as well. Uh, to get other other countries to participate as well. Uh, but with the countries that we currently have, I think maybe we can have our own uh, face Coco, uh, African Coco tournament uh, to be played amongst countries, you know, and also have coaches that are participating, federations that are going to be there, and also maybe learn from, 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 from each other. And then once maybe the World Cup kicks in, we will be ready, you know. It, it would be good for 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 us uh, in Africa to have our own uh, African Federation of Coco, you know, just to take the sport a bit further. I think that's that will be the next step, uh, administrative wise. Those who are doing the admin, because I'm only uh, on the coaching part for now, but maybe try to get African Coco Federation, uh, get these African countries to play against each other, and also go towards the World Cup. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope our international federation, they are really doing very well. As you mentioned, Mr. Priz Haldania, sir, Mr. Rohit Haldania, sir, they visited South Africa in 2019. They are really doing good and hope so. Our Coco World Cup is very soon and South Africa team will also join. I hope so. So moving forward, I would like to ask question from Papa Seka, madam. The visit of Mr. Priz Haldania, sir, and Mr. Rohit Haldania, sir, as a 
international Coca Federation. They visited South Africa in 2019. So how does it help South Africa to uplift the game? Um, I think their visit has a huge impact on us. It makes us uh, be aware that they are also see that the efforts and the 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 efforts that we're putting in the game, knowing that we are also recognized in other countries, it just yeah. makes us also just want to do more. Because I believe once you start hearing that, oh, South Africa is also doing great in yeah. Coco as a country, we also want to do more. We also want to see us participating on a larger scale, right. as right. as Mr. Ndaba mentioned, World Cups, competing our other African um, countries. So I think them coming here was a motivation to us. Yes, yes. To know that we can also, they, are, they also recognize us and also we can also perform on a larger scale. Yeah, yeah. So it was really helpful for our all the cocoa community that our international federation visited South Africa and they are doing good. So my next question will be from Dava sir. So my question is, is there any kind of gap between the interest, craze, or whatever we can say promotion between the rural and the urban people? Yeah, there's quite a lot, there is. There is a lot of, uh, of, of, of a gap, uh, I can say, maybe between the, the people in the rural areas as well as people in the urban areas. But, you know, we're trying to bridge the gap in South Africa because, you know, there's quite a whole lot of shortcomings that are there uh, in terms of maybe the resources. Maybe we we'll start with the resources, you know, clubs or teams that are in the urban areas, they, they seem to be very well resourced. Uh, compared to to, to 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 clubs or municipalities that are in the rural areas, uh, I think we should maybe sort that out in terms of training of coaches. Yes, yes. Make sure that the coaches are well equipped, making sure that the athletes are very well developed, and also maybe look into the infrastructure, infrastructure development in terms of having the sporting facilities or the sporting venues in places where they can actually participate and play, uh, safe venues for them uh, in terms of risking injuries and going and so forth. So I think there is a gap and uh, it's up to us as the Coco people, maybe to bridge the gap, maybe between the rural communities as well as the urban communities. But uh, with the right funding and the right uh, development models, I think we can get it right. Yes, yes. All we can do is we can try our level best to make the least gap and we can uh, do our level best to make all the people at the same level. So my next question will be from Mapa Seka, madam. So what kind of training you are giving to your team during a tournament? Um, with the preparations to a tournament, obviously we need to get our level, uh, our heads on the right level. So it starts first with your psychological. So we need to get them first on the right uh, state of mind. And then that's where we go hard on, on physical training. But we just don't focus on physical training. There are other things that we also do just to bring the, uh, the team together. So we can't always just focus on the physical training. There are activities just to help them be able to work together as a team yeah. and not individually. So yes. there are also other forms of training that we also adapt in 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 a sense to teach them how to work together as a team. And then also there are other trainings, technique also. We can't just all, always focus on being physical fit. We also need to come up with new strategies and try to be able to beat the other provinces. So it's all about strategies, techniques, and also team building. So my next question will be from Dava sir. Is there any influencer who is influencing the player, the people of the Coco in South Africa? Uh, I think the influences of the Coco in South Africa, it will be basically will be our, our players. Uh, we've got quite a good players from, from, from different provinces. You know, I think Gauteng, they've got a player called Alex. He's a very good player. I think he's a very good influencer of the sport. 
Uh, you have the Northwest, you know, they've got a player called Kaya, very good as a sprinter. He's a very good one. Uh, and you also got uh, some technical officials who are very influential to the game. Huh? There's quite a lot. Uh, I can name a few uh, from, from our technical officials board. Uh, I think we have this guy from 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 Gauteng, and this this another TO from the north way, from the Northern Cape. They're doing a sterling job in terms of making sure that the rules are, are applied properly in the games. And then you also have got coaches that are influential to the game. Uh, you know, coaches that have been dominant, coaches that have been there. Uh, you've got your Mapasekas, you've got your 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 your, your Nomnotos, and then you also got some guys from the Eastern Cape who are very influential to the game. Uh, with me, I can say I'm also part of those people who are influencing the game yeah, yes, positively. Yeah, definitely, because I think I think I, I bring in the most gold medals from South Africa, uh, which which makes me more passionate about the game and also making sure that other coaches are developed. It's not only about maybe me as a person. It's about the whole country. It's about the whole clubs. It's about the whole sporting code in the world, making sure that we develop the sports uh, and also making sure that, we, you know, we're taking this sport to, 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 to greater heights and people actually start believing in the code of coco is one of the of the big sports in the in the world i think that's where we are supposed to be going now right right so definitely our best influencer is our all players our all coaches our all officials who is doing their tireless job in order to make our game world popular so hats yeah. off to all of them and salute to them so moving apart, I would like to ask question from Papa Seka, madam. Can you please tell who are current the best player, boys and girls from the South Africa? Um, I think we have this other player from, let me start off with the males team. Uh, there's this other guy from KZN. I think he wears a number five. I'm not quite sure with his name. I'm not quite sure. But he's one of the guys who's always... Every year, he just shocks us. He just comes up with new tactics, with new styles. He's yeah. one of the best players. Yeah, I think I'm not quite sure with his name, but I, I'm certain that he's a player from KZN. And then also from the uh, females, there, there was this other player. There was this other player who once captured my eyes. I think there was a player from um, Limpopo and also KZN. There's this other girl from Limpopo. I'm not sure with her name, but she was a player from Limpopo. She was also, and she started off very young. Yeah, yeah. She was very young, but she was that you know, that very that very person with the so soft, so soft, but yet so very determined. And then yeah. there's um there's this other girl from yes KZN. She was once the captain for a very long time. She was a very tall, nice lady, very sweet lady. She was once that girl who brought it. She always brought her A game. I think there, there's a lot that we learn from the KZN team as they always bring results. There's something that we get from them always. It's like, okay, no, this is what we need to work on. So I think most of the, they they've got really great players. And I think that's where we can say they've got really great players yeah yeah so dava sir can you please say who is the currently best player from the south africa <laughs> uh i think uh currently in south africa if you go to the to the males side i think the current player the best player in south africa for now uh in my standards will be uh I'll go for my captain. I think it is Senzo Koza. is uh, a captain for Team KZN. I think he has improved dramatically uh, in terms of leadership, uh, in terms of coordinating the plays during the games, uh, in terms of bringing, you know, the team together, both at district level as well as the provincial level. I think it's a whole lot of work 
that goes in in becoming the best. You not only have to look at the physical part, but we also have to look at the contribution of the players on the team as a whole, in terms of uh, maybe motivating other players, in terms of making sure that you as a player now, you're at the top of your game, because it makes it a whole lot simple. Uh, when you have your best players performing at their best level, it makes your life a whole lot easier if you do it that way. I think on the male side, we'll, we'll take things. And then when you go to the female side, female side, I'll take, uh, I'll take, uh, let me see. No wonder is no longer playing. So for now, I will take uh, Londega. I will take Londega Mkwanazi. Uh, Londega Mkwanazi, she's, she knows she's the best. She's from Peter Maritzburg in Durban. Uh, she, she brings it, I tell you. I call her Jack. Uh, she's the jack of all trades. So, 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 so. I think currently those are the players, and we also need to look maybe into other provinces. Uh, also look into uh, players from other provinces. I think on the male side you also have Kaya from 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 the northwest. Uh, you also have Alex from from Gauteng. I think he brings it. He brings it a lot. Uh, and I think in the female side, you've also got, you know, that the, 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 the goal that Mapastega was telling about from Lipopo, she started very young. She was, you, you know, uh, people will actually have a hard time in catching her during the game. Sometimes wow. she would run for the entire game. Uh, that is how good she is. I think I, I also agree uh, when it comes to that. I think it's, it, it's very important to acknowledge other players uh, from other teams. Uh, so that so that you improve because that's how you improve. You look at how your opponents are doing, uh, and then you try to benchmark yourself uh, against those opponents and try to make sure that you always improve. And uh, you know, I expect a whole lot of uh, teams to improve in Coco. Uh, so that's why I always have to bring my A game as well as a coach. <laughs> I know that the likes of the Mapasegas and uh, and uh, and the J and the King JST, they want to make sure that you know you know you know they, they pick it up. So I uh, we also have to pick it up as coaches to make sure that we have these good teams in our country, uh, making sure that Coco grows boards and make sure that we encourage each other as coaches. Uh, you know, it's very hard to lead a team and I, I understand uh, as case that we always have, have to bring back that gold medal. Uh, maybe it's better for them, but for us, you know, you always have to be number one and I think that pressure it comes with, 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 with the respect that the team has. Uh, the respect that, that 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 we give to our opponents, and also maybe the the the, the respect that we deserve to give to each other as, as athletes and coaches and administrators in the sport. Yes. So as you said, a lot of names of players. So I think there is a lot of players who is playing so good, and there is a lot of best players. And this is a good thing that we have a lot of players who is performing good in the Coco. So I hope our these champions will carry this legacy and they will really do very great in the Coco. So my next question is from uh, Mapa Seka, madam. What is the yes. valuable lesson you have learned in the life from this sport? Um, I think the most valuable lesson is that we should really never give up. Yeah. And I think from position, when I was a player, we used to struggle a lot. But then I, when I was the coach, I managed to bring back a bronze after such a very long time. And I think that was the most thing that motivated me, just to keep going, keep going, just to never give up. And I always tell my team that, you know what, once you start going, there's a lot of things that people don't get. Once you start practicing things and every day and start training, you get better at it. And once you're better the results will show. And then once the results are showing, then there's nothing stopping you. So I think the most valuable lesson is that to actually never give up and never doubt yourself as a player. Yeah, definitely. So my question, this same question is from Dava sir. What is the most valuable lesson you have learned in the life from this sport? Uh, I think the most important one is that it's teamwork. I think I learned to 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 I I I I I came together to to get a skill where I can bring in different people from different areas, get them to to focus on the same thing, making sure that we have the proper goals and you have 
your, your, your planning in place, uh, making sure that everyone is rowing together, you know, in a team, uh, we sing together, we struggle together. And I always tell my team, you, you know, uh, no matter what happens, uh, we all get the same color medal. So if we work hard enough and we are better than the other teams, we all get the gold medal, irrespective of the performance of each individual. So each player's individual has got to be brought together in the context of a team. And once we work together as a team, I tell you, we are unstoppable. Uh, and we've been doing that for years, you know. Even if we change our players around, but the philosophy stays the same. The, the, the sport is about teamwork. And yeah, once yeah. you get the teamwork right, I tell you everything, the discipline, the running, the rowing, and the diving, the pole dives, and everything, it just yeah, clicks. Yeah. As long as you get your team together, once you get people to work together, irrespective of their backgrounds, irrespective of their traditions or religions and everything, once you get that out of the way and you get them to focus on the Coco game, I tell you, they can perform at a tremendous level and they will give you the results. So I think that is what has worked for me over the past years and it's working for me currently uh, in, the, in, in the team and the KZN team. And also we're trying to bring it together into the national team, you know, to bring the same philosophy uh, with the South African team that is going to be participating maybe in the World Championships or in the World Cup. So we try to bring the same strategy and see if if other countries can 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 can, can, can defeat us in the strategy. Yeah, it's really good that uh, this is a game of run and change, and this is a team game. So we have to believe each other and we have to keep supporting each other. So it's a really good thought. So my next question is from Madam, Ma'am. What advice you will give to the new upcoming players who wants to make their career in this sport? Um, I think the first thing as a player, what I would advise, especially these young coming players, to always be disciplined. Yes. Once you are disciplined, you'll be able to take direction from a coach. So discipline plays a huge role. And then discipline goes hand in hand with respect. Yes. Once you have respect for your teammates, your opponents, you'll be able to grow not only as a person, but also as a player. Yeah. And then secondly, I would advise my players to always know their strength. Your strength cannot match the other player's strength. But once you know what you can do, you'll be able to do it outstandingly so. So yeah. you need to understand yourself as a player, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and then as a player, you'll be unmatched. And also, uh, the most important one is to be able to learn. As a player, you need to be able to learn and also be able to work in a team. Yes, yes. Especially as Coco is a game that it's not only played by just the play one player, it's yeah. players. So yeah. it's a team. You need to be able to work in a team and be able to learn from others and take direction also. Yeah, yeah. So uh, your advice is really good. So my same question is from Dava, sir. What advice you will give to the youth who wants to make their career in this sport? Uh, I I think my one will go hand in hand with my, with, with, with my Pasega, but uh, more, most importantly, uh, it is to believe in themselves. I think that's the most important sure, thing. Sure. It's the most important thing. Whatever you do, you need to believe in, in who you are. You need to believe in what you bring to the table. You need to understand that as a human being, you are worthy to be respected, worthy to be disciplined, worthy to work hard. And I think uh, that is where really most young people do not want to do. They do not want to work extra, extra hard. And I have always believed that with you can always, you know, you can always do the impossible. And once you start believing, it opens up a lot of opportunities for you as a person. You know, when we started Coco in South Africa, it was a recreational sport. And then now when you talk about Coco, you're talking about a very competitive sport. Uh, look at us today. We are speaking to you and, and you are based in India and we are in South Africa. That is how far we have grown uh, in South Africa as a sport. 
because now you know of us and now we know of you and very soon we are going to be meeting each other physically uh, could be in a conference could be uh, in any sporting activity and then uh, we'll be speaking about about the same thing and we'll be having respect for each other so i think for athletes to grow they need to develop the sense the sense of respect for themselves as a person, the sense of being disciplined at all times, and the sense of always pushing to be number one. You're not always going to be number one, but yeah. you always strive to be the best. Uh, in everything that you do, you strive to be the best. And once you, once you have strived to be the best, and I tell you, you will be the best. So if you believe in yourself, uh, I believe everything can be done. So I think that's my philosophy that I try to plant towards the young upcoming players. Uh, that it could be school, it could be church, it could be anything that you are engaging in in that particular moment. Believe in your concepts, believe in who you are, believe in what you bring to the table and I tell you uh, the results will come. And that's how we've been bringing in results over the past years. Yes, yes. You are right, sir. We have to believe in ourselves. Once we are believing in ourselves, we can do whatever we want. So what kind of plans is Coco of South Africa having for the upcoming future? Um, I think our plans as a country, we want to see us uh, performing on a greater level, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just only competing against the other provinces for now. But also we want to also have individual leagues in our own provinces. And then that's when we can grow the talent also. And then once we are able to, you know, um, compete in a greater scale, as, just as these other countries have also playing um, Coco, like Namibia, the other countries that we have mentioned, I think once we also get to compete on yeah. that level, that's when we'll see growth as a country. Yeah, yeah. And hope uh, our International Federation they will make this day very soon because they are connecting to the, all the countries and they are trying to connect with them. And once the connection will complete, they will conduct such tournaments like uh, bilateral series, trilateral and World Cup also. We can't yeah. wait for such greater heights. Yeah, yeah. We all is waiting for this such kind of big opportunity. So my next question mm. will be from Dava, sir. As we know, our Coco is playing all over the globe, more than 30 to 35 countries. So what is your thought on including Coco in Olympics? Uh, I, I think it will be a great initiative uh, for including Coco in the Olympics. You know, I once did a, a bit of research and I saw that Coco was once uh, displayed or played in the Olympics in the past years. And I, I do not know what happened in terms of development uh, because it should be there. I believe Coco should be there, should be one of the sports that we should be advocating to be part of the Olympics. Uh, and it should also be maybe be part of our of our games here in Africa. We just had all our, our Africa games. Uh, I think maybe we should also maybe include Coco is one of the Africa games, even though if it's from India, because they have football as well. So we can also include Coco as a sport. Uh, and as a federation in, uh, in South Africa, I think maybe it's, it's high time that maybe we'll work with our counterparts in our, in our other countries uh, in terms of sponsorships, in terms of running professional leagues, and maybe in terms of having a global calendar for Coco. You know, once we have a global calendar where we know when we have our, our leagues, when do we have our ties, and when do we actually can have our, our international competitions for Coco, just like how they have in the Diamond League and in, the, in athletics and in cricket and, and other sporting codes as well. Maybe have a global calendar for Coco, uh, have more participants, you know, from different countries. Maybe also train our technical officials, uh, train them, get enough training for our technical officials. Was actually thinking, of maybe having one day a global seminar for Coco, we all the countries that participate in Coco, yes. you know, they they, they 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 converge in one in one place, and then we have uh, a universal Coco rule book uh, that is going to be adopted by all countries that are participating in the in the sport, adopt that rule book. 
uh, in terms of officiating, have some standards in terms of coaching, uh, coaching licenses, you know, for our coaches. I think maybe we should have that, get the, those coaching licenses for our coaches. Also, maybe get our, our coaches from Africa and Asia uh, to come together and do uh, one training. You know, once we have that one training and we all get the same licenses, then we can all compete on the a, on a same scale. Because, you know, currently, if we were to play India for now, uh, I think maybe they, are part, they, they, they may be upper than us. But in terms of tactics, I think South Africa we have more tactics than India because I've watched the Indian games. It's not that tactical but our South African game is more tactical than the Indian game and I believe that we can also have a lot of things that we can teach uh, other countries and there's a lot that other countries can teach us as yeah. uh, administrative coaches uh, as well as technical officials including our players as well you know they also need to be developed uh, and be able to participate on an international scale because currently they've been playing uh, on a national scale. And so it would be a great sure. opportunity for them to fly to other countries and participate in the game of Coco. I think that would be the, the good thing. Yes. So, sir, as you said, we need to connect ourselves. Like, we need to connect with the International Coco Federation. We need to connect with the, all over the countries who wants to play the Coco. And we must having a schedule of the international tournaments, whatever they can do. And at the same time, we need few best coaching, like our coaches should get a proper coaching camp and our training camp. By this, we will definitely make our game more popular and we will succeed. And whatever we want, we will be at the top of the world with our sport and all the Coco players. So at the last, I would like to ask what words you will say about our work as a Coco champions, we are working to promote the game. Um, I'm really quite honored to be a part of this meeting. I'm very, very honored. I don't want to lie. Um, I think we are we are quite developing as just South Africa. For us to be able to be on a platform with you guys shows so much growth within our country. And I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Not just only that, but our Coco community as well. And I think it's doing it's doing a very great job in just promoting the sports. It's getting to places where it was never new and now almost all the countries are participating in it. So I'm, it's, I'm amazed of how much growth there is. Thank you, ma'am. Can you please send Dava sir about the work of our Coco champions and the work of the Koto? Uh, I think uh, Coco champions, uh, it's a very good initiative. Uh, I think uh, we need to, to take it maybe a bit higher now. Maybe have a Coco Champions uh, a, a YouTube channel uh, where we can actually view all our interviews and have uh, the worst of countries and also maybe have the Coco Champions brand maybe moving around the, the countries where Coco is played, you know, yeah. where you can be physically there. Uh, maybe broadcast some of the games for us, you know. Uh, maybe we can watch some of the games like we watch with the Ultimate Coco. Yeah. I love the Ultimate Coco because we watch it live, you know. You get you get to fill the, the, the bars of the tournament. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically that. And also maybe uh, trying to engage, you know, in Africa we have like 54 countries, you know. Maybe try to engage more African countries to take up the sport. Maybe have have some kind of funding, you know, uh, the yeah. funding that we can use to go develop uh, in other countries and in other districts and other areas uh, so that the, the, the game becomes more popular. And I think it, it's already popular, but to make it more popular, Coco Champions uh, from social media, can we take it maybe on TV? Uh, take it up to to the YouTube channel, uh, take it up wherever you can take it up and also be physically there and maybe employ more people, eh? employ us in, in, in South Africa. Uh, so then yes. we push the Coco Champions brand, you know? So whenever there are games, you also get some, some people to do interviews in this country. Uh, they send it to you so that you, you can maybe edit it and, uh, and post it on the group 
so that uh, Coco Champions become a well-known brand uh, uh, and also maybe get some broadcast rights, you know, to make right. some more money. Uh, right. I'm giving you some business. Yeah, yeah. Also, maybe try to get some some broadcast rights with, with the broadcasters, you know, uh, yeah. so that this pay has more money and once you have more money uh you'll be able to spread your wings and go wherever that you want to go and i believe and i believe on the kind of work that you mr mr Raj, that you're doing it's a good initiative i tell you uh a lot of people are going to be amazed when they see this interview and the kind of work that you put in and i think you know a lot of countries will want you to to come and interview them as well, which is a good thing for us so that we grow yeah. as a sport uh, of Coco. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. I have mentioned all your point, whatever you have suggested me. I will try to do my level best. And at the last, I would like to thank Daba, sir, and I would like to thank Papa Seka, madam, for giving your best time. Means this is my longest interview I have ever done. So lots of patience mm -hmm. you have shown. Lots of time you have given and lots of things I have came to know about the Coco in South Africa. So heartily thank you, both of you, for making this episode grand successful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. I'm uh, thank you very much. Looking okay. forward to seeing you in future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>